Hello there, I'm Gary Sims from Android Authority. Do you want to know about the Snapdragon 845? Well, let me explain. So Qualcomm have just had their technical summit in Hawaii and we've just been getting all the great new details about the next year's uh, flagship uh, system on a chip. That's the Snapdragon 845, the Snapdragon 845. So what is it? Well, first of all, it is a 64-bit system on a chip that's going to be found in Android phones and also probably in Windows laptops. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. Now, inside of it, there are lots and lots of different components. That's what a system on a chip means. It's not just a CPU, in there you've also got a GPU, you've got a, a, an image processor for the camera, you've got a DSP for doing signal uh, processing and also for doing some uh, heavy computation like neural network stuff. You've got security, you've got all the connectivity like the modem and of course Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and that's all built into just one chip. So looking at some of the components individually, let's start with the CPU. Now the CPU in the uh, Snapdragon 845 is the Cryo 385. Now it's built on Cortex technology. That means that Qualcomm have taken a, a core design or two core designs from ARM and then they have tweaked them a little bit, maybe in some of the internals, maybe in how it fits into the rest of the chip, the layout physically on the, uh, on the silicon. And then they've allowed to brand that as their own chip design, which in this case is the cryo 385 now it's probably that it is the cortex a75 and the cortex a55 now if you remember the cortex a75 and a55 are the two new core designs from arm that use dynamic and the great thing about dynamic is that these cores are now together in the same cluster which means they can share a lot of the same buses and a lot of the same input and outputs to the rest of the chip without having to be separate and then kind of working uh, independently. Now here we've got four uh, high performance cores, Cortex A75 cores running at 2.8 gigahertz and we've got four power efficiency cores, that's the Cortex A55 running at 1.8 gigahertz. So each of the cores have L1 cache and L2 cache. The L2 on the bigger cores is slightly larger, 256K per core, and it's 128K per core for the A55 power efficiency cores. But beneath that, there is an L3 cache of two megabytes. Now that L3 cache of two megabytes works across just the cores. It doesn't work across the GPU and the DSP as well. So what Qualcomm has added in another layer of caching, which they're calling system cache, which is a further three megabytes. And that means that when the CPU and the GPU want to talk to each other, that data can be cached on chip without having to go out to main memory. Of course, going out to main memory is slow. And of course, these are all relative terms. So when you add up all that caching, three megabytes across the system core, and then two megabytes across the L3 cache, and then L2 cache of one megabyte for the high performance cores, half a megabyte for the uh, power efficiency cores, that's six and a half megabytes of cache, excluding the L1 caches. Now that's a, a significant amount of cache, and that's gonna be part of the reason why they've managed to bump up the performance here by 30%. Of course, also the A75 and the A55 are much more uh, a much more faster performance than the previous generation anyway, but a 30% increase. Interestingly, it's not as much cash as you find in the A11 Bionic. However, we're getting close to that kind of level. Now, if you think about a 30% performance increase, that's absolutely amazing. If I said to you that you could buy a new car or a new television or a new microwave, that in its measure of performance, it was 30% better than the last model, that, that's pretty impressive. Now, talking about memory for a moment, this uh, system on a chip uses LP, low power DDR4. It runs at 1.8 gigahertz, and you can have a maximum of eight uh, gigabytes uh, in a, a Snapdragon 845 phone. So we're not gonna see any 16 gigabyte phones next year. And looking at the GPU that comes in the Snapdragon 845, it's the Adreno 630. Qualcomm has said it's a, the next generation. They've done a lot of work from the ground up to build this new GPU. It's 30% a greater performance while using 30% less uh, power, which is quite amazing. And also it has a 2.5 times a display throughput. So significant gains in both the CPU and the GPU performance. 
So the DSP in the uh, Snapdragon 845 is the latest generation Hexagon DSP. It does more than just digital signal processing and also do lots of vector calculations. It's a third generation of vector engine inside this uh, DSP and Qualcomm are positioning this for all of their neural network processing. So it doesn't have a dedicated NPU or neural engine. They're saying you can do this on their DSP. And to that end, the DSP supports all of the common uh, neural networking uh, frameworks, including TensorFlow Lite, and also it now supports Halide, that uh, programming language that's being used for image processing, which you will find also in Google's Pixel 2 smartphone. And the update to enable that, of course, was in uh, Android Oreo 8.1. And then also you've got the Spectra 280 ISP, which is the image signal processor, which of course is used for when data comes from the camera, how you process all that information and turn it into movie files and JPEG files that we all like to use. Now the, spec the new Spectra ISP can record 4K at 60 frames a second. That's a lot of bandwidth they've put in there. It supports a 10 bit color gamut for video recording. So now you can actually record in this new HDR mode, which will give you 10 bit of color. And also it can do 480 frames per second slow-mo, but only in uh, 720p. Now the, the new DSP and the ISP actually present a problem for Samsung, funnily enough, because now that there's so much extra stuff going on on the uh, Qualcomm uh, SOC, not just a CPU and a GPU, but we've got these extras that are doing a lot of multimedia work, a lot of processing work, a lot of neural network stuff. What happens when Samsung want to release their next phone and some of them are using Samsung's Exynos chips and some of them are using Qualcomm's, where are they gonna draw the line for the lowest common denominator? That's gonna be a real marketing problem for them. We'll see what Samsung release next year and see whether they've kind of chipped down or taken down the Qualcomm uh, processor a peg or two so you can't do this fantastic slow mode or you can't do 10-bit color recording. If their new Exynos chip doesn't support it, we don't know yet. So it'll be interesting to see what they come out with the new Exynos chip to because these two have to work side by side in two versions of the S9 or the Note 9 or whatever uh, Samsung release. Also built onto the chip is Qualcomm's acoustic uh, chip, and that's Acoustic AQ uh, stick, acoustic, and that supports uh, aptX, aptX, which of course is the Bluetooth codec from Qualcomm, which delivers greater audio quality than the standard Bluetooth codec. And talking of audio, you've also got Bluetooth True Wireless, which is a proprietary standard from Qualcomm that allows uh, two Bluetooth streams to come independently to maybe a left earbud and a right earbud, uh, and they both come independently from the phone rather than one being the master and it kind of copying the information over to the other one. And while we're talking about Bluetooth, there's also full support for Bluetooth 5 built into the Snapdragon 845. Three more things worth mentioning. One is that it's also got the new X20 LTE category 18 modem, which means it has a potential download speed of 1.2 uh, uh, gigabits per second. A lot of people get very excited about the LTE modems. I don't quite get so excited because it really does depend on what your carrier provides. And while these manufacturers are able every year to bring out a new phone and bring out a new modem, it's a bigger difference to change a whole country or a whole state to have the latest uh, LTE network on it. So we're always kind of uh, a few generations behind what the actual phones can manage. However, for the future, that's a really good sign. The SOC also supports Quick Charge 4, which is Qualcomm's latest quick charging technology, and it's backwardly compatible with USB power delivery. And if you wanna know what USB power delivery is, then please do check out my video on this channel where I go into great detail about what it actually can do for us as consumers. And the last component worth mentioning is the new security processing unit. That's basically a way of kind of keeping things like fingerprint data and passwords and authentication processes very separate from the CPU. So even if some kind of malware manages to get onto the low levels of your CPU, here's now another barrier that protects this biometric information and protects your digital information. It actually has its own CPU, probably a Cortex M3. It runs its own little operating system and the CPU will talk to it and say, hey, let's do some authentication here and it's a separate entity. So overall I'm pretty impressed with what the uh, Snapdragon 845 is offering in terms of the specifications. You've got the latest CPU using Dynamic from ARM, you've got the latest GPU from Qualcomm themselves and on top of that you've got the DSP and the ISP and the acoustic 
uh, chip audio processor, and then you've got the security processor, you've got access to eight gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM. It looks really, really impressive. Of course, we won't know how impressive it truly is until we see phones launched next year. But talking of phones being launched, Qualcomm did make it very clear that this chip is optimized for Android and for Windows running on ARM. So with this year, we've just seen the launch of the laptops running Windows uh, on the Snapdragon 835. And next year, absolutely, we're gonna see uh, laptops running Windows on the Snapdragon 845. So my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Android Authority's YouTube channel. Hit that little bell icon so you get notifications whenever we release a new video. And last but not least, please go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.